Before we get started, a quick parental warning. Today's episode contains alcohol, but certainly no more than Utah's legal limit, so you should be good. Press the button, and away we go. Ahoy! White Lightning, Stump Whiskey, White Whiskey, Mountain Dew, Hooch, Mash. We're doing this corn liquor now. It's moonshine, sir. Why are you showing me this? This is garbage. It ain't garbage, boss. Just take a sip. It's a quarter the cost of the other stuff, and it gets people where they want to go in half the time. I trusted you. I can't run my business selling this. Nobody wants this. You still trust me. Take a sip of this. Any of the easies in Chicago will buy this stuff with mock-up. A pipeline is straight through the Appalachians. We buy it less than wholesale and sell it retail. I know how to run a business. You do, Scuzari, but look. Ever since we've been threatened by the Prohibition, we've run out of extra options. Now, all our dealings are done with people who still have production. These toothless hillbillies have- I can hear everything you're saying. I ain't toothless, neither. Uh, let's get him a taste of your shine, can we? Sure. <coughs> uh, this? Lim in Chicago's already buying the mash. They already got a taste for it. I shouldn't be taking on new bosses. But for you, Mr. Scozari, I can make an exception. You don't have to like it. We have enough in reserves for 20 lifetimes. We just take these barrels and we decide to buy more. Or not to. Your goons done sold two barrels in less than a day in Asheville. My goons? Mine? Fosco, are you already selling this? Did I authorize this? I authorized this. We already have blind pigs asking for more. It sells. You don't have to like it. I've never had worse liquor in my life. Now that there's the best there is. I take offense. I don't care if you do take offense. I will not buy this stuff. Boss, let me... This is why I never do business with you, I tell you. You don't have to do business with anyone. Boss! Today's episode takes us back to the 1920s, during the era of Prohibition. We're mostly going to follow Neil and his adventures peddling liquor while alcohol is illegal in the States. If you enjoy what you're about to hear, stay tuned to the very end to find out how you can help support future episodes. Let's go ahead and meet Neil now, so don't turn that dial. There's a sad cat. What makes a panther cry? Welcome back, Neil. Who's this handsome man? Well, good evening, Arlene. This here's Howard, a new associate of ours. Oh my, it is great to make your acquaintance, Howard. Any associate of Neil's is an acquaintance of mine. Neil, your table's open. So who owns this joint? Miss Adelaide. She's a doll. Addie. Welcome, boys. Can I interest you in some drinks this time? She owns this easy? But she's a color girl. Yes, I am. As colorful as God's creation. No. Thanks for the offer. We'll just go in the back. Howard, this is a black and tan establishment. Hooch brings people of all types together and Addie is wonderful enough to let us into her fine place. This is what we do, Howard. We are dealing with illicit products and we're creating unity, one beverage at a time. If the boss hears anything about color, you'll be in a world of hurt. Uh, Barkeep, would you mind getting me an old fashioned? Boys, why don't you make yourselves comfortable? I'll have one of my girls get you something. Ah, a true work of art. You are a master of your craft. What's your pleasure? You want a game? Some smokes? We're on business tonight, Arlene. Thank you, anyhow. 
I'll have the cigar girl make her way around. Howard, Scozari is out. We're gonna get rid of him. Fosco is taking the top, and soon it'll be our turn. We can't take Scozari, Neil. There ain't no way he's got protection. And we're half of it. It's called by Fosco. He's the man in charge now. Scozari is living in the old world. We have two more months before the sauce is totally illegal, and we gotta get it before we can anymore. Scazzari's the boss. He's a good man, Neil. Look, the writing's been on the wall since October. Scazzari is out, and everyone who retaliates is out too. I'm telling you this is a personal favor. You're new to the crew, and I thought you deserved to know. You can be in on it and not get caught in the action without a plan, or you can watch from the sidelines and see the world pass you by, or worse. I got kids. Exactly. Think of the kids. They want their daddy to come home at night. It's all going down next week, and I need to know you're in. I'm, I'm in. What do you need me to do? Let's get some cigar rounds over here, would you, toots? So, here's what you gotta do. We need to get our distribution to increase along the East Coast. We already got from here to Illinois, but we need to expand eastward. Boss, we can barely keep up as it is. The other families are choking the producers. Our stores are already asking for more. If we stretch too thin, the other families could take what we do have. I'm not looking for excuses, Fosco. We have an opportunity we've waited for all this time. And finally, we can be lords of our own destinies. Yes, boss. In hindsight, I imagine killing the moonshiner in North Carolina wasn't a very good idea. What, that toothless racist? Not a hundred years of prohibition would force me to buy the swill from that man. Uh, perhaps we reconsider the swill idea just until we establish ourselves on the East Coast? Uh, horrible stuff. Oh, absolutely, boss. Horrible, awful stuff. But we're not the ones drinking it. Maybe buy a truck of the wretched stuff, see how it sells, and then we decide uh, there's only one more month before it's too late. The other families will take a stranglehold on the suppliers in the hills before long. You can arrange a truck? A truck. Yes, boss. We'll take it to Addie, and if she can't peddle it, then we never talk of the moonshine ever again. Capitalize on anyone else's misfortune, Fosco. Be generous, but make a buck doing it. If we keep this up, our children will never want for anything. Yes, boss. Neil, pull over to that barn over there. Yes, boss. That was a shorter drive than the last one. Yeah, if you can't buy from the best, buy from the best you can. This one happens to be more local. Here we are, Skuzari. I wanted to see you alone. We'll be right out here. We already had your security check out the barn. It's just the one Shiner. He wanted to see me alone? I wanted you to see him alone. After the last time, we couldn't have another bloodbath. Like I said, boss, we're right here if you need us. Howard's in there for sure? Yes, boss. He knows the full picture. You don't need to worry about... It's done. Go check. If Howard says it's done, it's done, boss. I just want to make sure it's finished. I need to know before I take over the distribution. Yes, boss. <sighs> We're good, boss. Business has never been better. Well, it helps to be the only joint serving the only booze in town. It does. What'll it be tonight, boys? We're just here to see how our newest addition to your lineup is. The shine ain't too bad. Apparently my clientele isn't too particular since the prohibition started. Commissioner, welcome back. Your table is ready. The usual tonight? Is that a police commissioner? It is. He's harmless in here. This is the only place his wife won't find him. You'd be surprised by the crowd that hangs with the likes of him. I'll bet. Addie, it's always a pleasure. 
You keep bringing that hooch around, and we'll always have a place for you here at Crazy Addie's. I'll have to keep that in mind. Come on, Howard. I guess Fosco's gamble with the shine paid off. Not at all. There was no gamble. People would drink aftershave if it was their only source of the hard stuff. We just happened to snag the market while the getting was still able to be got. We just happened to be the oasis in the desert because we thought ahead, Howard. We interrupt your regularly scheduled broadcasting with a quick telegram. Well, get on with it. It reads, Canadian border closed. Stop. Deliveries of the sweetness being hauled underground. Stop. Meet your local runner at the northernmost petrol station. Stop. What else does it say? It continues, fresh genuine Canadian maple syrup. Stop. One toonie for a Mickey. Stop. Get a second Mickey for just a loony more. Stop. By Jove, they're distributing fresh genuine Canadian maple syrup? I think I need to get me some of that fresh genuine Canadian maple syrup. How does it say I should get it again? It just says, meet your local runner at the northernmost petrol station. Stop. <laughs> Looks like we need to jump in the Model A. What are we waiting for? Hey, while you're grabbing a poutine and a double-double, get your fresh, genuine Canadian maple syrup at your northernmost petrol station. And now, back to your regularly scheduled programming. Neil. I have, uh... A different kind of mission in mind for the likes of you. Your reputation is flawless. You already have a way with the local officials. But that's only been child's play. Skazari was focusing on the wrong things. He wanted to grow the business to as many states as possible. I have other ideas in mind. Sir? Since the states have gone dry, so too has the capital. We need to focus on not only quantity, but quality clientele. I'm not sure I'm following. Congress, Neil. Congress. They're drier than the state of Arizona. Ever since Green Hat Cassidy got caught, there's nobody supplying the congressman. Green Hat Cassidy? <laughs> you didn't know he got caught. No, sir. Well, you think you're up to it? What do you say, Neil? I'd have to say... I... Don't have a suit, sir. <laughs> we'll get you a few suits, Mr. Neal. Don't you worry. Tell us, Horace. Who was involved in the shooting? I want names. All of them. My boss, Otis. He was the one running the operation, making the hooch. We was at the barn making the first deal with the Italian. What was the Italian's name? It started with an S. Um... Scazzari. Scazzari? Scazzari was in the barn in this county? Yeah. He started the shooting, and he had two goons with him. I don't know any of their names. This one? Yeah. He was there all right. He was trying to buy the shine. But Scazzari wasn't having none of that. That's Fosco. He was his right-hand man up until recent. Now he runs the show, since Scazzari got knocked off. Okay, who else was there? What was the other goon's name? You got me there. I don't rightly know. What about all the rest of your guys? We buried them all. There wasn't nothing that could have been done. You're telling me that every one of your friends at the barn got killed? Yes, sir. Who helped bury them? I can't imagine you buried them all yourself. No, we done buried them at the church. Good Christian burial. We're going to verify these statements, and if they pan out to be 100% true, we may be able to work out a deal. Maybe less chain gang for you. But you said... I know what I said. We have to verify your claims, and we'll for sure have more questions for you later. We can reduce your sentencing then. Sound good, Mr... Horace? And the man buying the gem from me was the very one who proposed the Volstead Act. Andrew Volstead himself. Now you're talking like you know a thing or two about laws and such. You know, Howard, I'm starting to feel like I know a thing or two about laws and such. 
I may just run for Congress one of these days. I think I have the knack for these things. Addie, would you mind having one of your girls bring me another? I'm on a roll today. What would your first act in Congress be, Neil? You know what? I would make sure we keep the spirits illegal forever. Business ain't never been so good. You wouldn't believe it either. These lawmakers call me Mr. Mr. Neil. Don't you be thinking that because you're called Mr. on Capitol Hill that I'm going to be calling you Mr. too. No, ma'am. I like us just the way we are. You wanted another, Mr. Neil? I see it's catching on. Nah, Eddie. I've always been Mr. Neil to Arlene. Fine, fine. Enjoy your night, gentlemen. Well, we plan to. Thank you, Addie. Now, Neil, shouldn't you be headed home to see the wife? Don't spoil the fun, Miss Adelaide. Just one round, won't you, hon? Yes, Miss Addie. Can't we play a round? We don't play billiards no more. Oh, round. Rack him up, Neil. I'll play next. I have to stick around while the band packs up anyhow. Are we putting money on this one round or no? You know I ain't no good at billiards. Just a quarter then? Too rich for my blood. Arlene, I saw that tip you got from that one table. You have the funds to spare. A quarter. A quarter for a round. Looks to me we have a game. Tell me, Neil. Why don't you ever stick around to you? You ain't never stay around here no more. I'm up in D.C. all the time. You already know this. But why D.C.? You don't want to be around Chicago? Or here? I go where I'm needed. Oh, good shot. I thought you've never played this before. I never said I never played before. I ain't no good at it is all. Could have fooled me. Chicago's way too hot right now. All the bigs are over there. Dillinger, Nelson. Everybody who's anyone is getting the heat in Illinois. How's business around here? Business has never been better. All it took was making hooch illegal for me to be a hot commodity. Prices are higher and so are margins, but who wants to talk shop? I thought we were still here to relax. Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, how are the kids, Miss Eddie? The kids? They're just peachy keen. The little one's walking now. Walking, you say? He was no bigger than my hand the last time I saw him. He's so big, Neil. Why don't you come by my place tomorrow and you can see the little ones? Can't. I had to go back up to D.C. in the morning. I'm just here for the night. Then, boy, why aren't you over at your place with the wife? She don't know I'm in town. She'd have my hide if she knew I was here for just a night. It's just best if I stay away from the old place until I have a couple of days. I don't need your judgments, ladies. They know I'm why they can afford to have food right now. I got a question for you. How do you get to the politicians to sell to them? I pay off all the people in between. Green Hat Cassidy had already paved the way, so I was able to use the same people and avoid the squealers. This man. What's he doing now? I don't know that man. Fosco's right-hand man. He was at the barn that one day. Yes, I, re I remember now. I don't know what he is doing. I think you know more than you're letting on. Your wife said you have spoken to him. You have my wife? Mary Jean? We're taking good care of her. Tell me about this man. What do you know? Lord, help me. You help you. Tell me about him. Why was he paying you, Horace? He's supplying hooch to the folks up in Washington. What folks? Them lawmakers. He's selling to the top. You're telling me we got rid of Green Hat only to have cleared the way for another nobody to take the supply to the top? Sure seems that way, Mr. Lawman. Now, you let go of my wife. What was her name again? Mary Jean. Mary Jean, yes. Never had the pleasure of meeting her. But thank you ever so much for the information. Good night, Horace. Howard, it's the coppers. Pull over. Let me get them their crate. Mr. Neal! Welcome! 
Welcome to Virginia. Who might you be? Oh, allow me to introduce myself, Mr. Neal. I'm the agent who has been tracking you these last few months, and I can't imagine why you never bother to get me and my boys our share. If you haven't gotten your share, Agent, I apologize. A allow me to... <laughs> Too late, Neil. Too late. Howie, shall we? Yeah, boss. Where are we going to next? What's the name of that joint again? Addie's? That's the one. Addie's. As Neil, I am Doug the Bug. As Fosco, I'm Mike McGar. As Skazari, I'm Robin Robbins. As Adelaide, I'm Morgan Blackwell. As Arlene, I'm Isabella Del Rio. As Otis, I am Chad Bell. As Howard, I'm Terry Eden. As Agent, I'm Nathan Woltering. As Horace, I'm Derek B. Berry. As Commercial Narrator Number One, I'm Stephen John Drew. As Commercial Narrator Number Two, I'm Brittany Morgan. Our theme music was written by Joseph Weatherford, and today's theme was played by Kellogg Underpass. If you'd like your musical talents to be featured on an upcoming episode, email me for the sheet music or simply find it on our website. Oh, and the musicians who played the bluegrass for some of the scenes were by the band The Better Half. We like to express our gratitude to our firearms specialist, Max Goose. If you want to be recognized as a stage assistant like them, just give us a five-star review on any platform, Apple Podcasts, Podchaser, or wherever else you can. Sincerely, if you are able to do this, that would help us out not only in the vanity department, but also in the discoverability department. We'd really appreciate it. Also, I do love coming up with the stage roles. Mercury Theater Podcast is 100% listener supported, therefore I certainly can't afford to not thank our patrons, Chad Bell and Ann Robinson. If you like this podcast and want bonus content like the outtakes, my personal favorite part of the whole show, scripts to read along with and more, consider supporting us on Patreon for as little as two bucks a month. That's like getting two olive picks at the dollar store. If you haven't already, please hit subscribe or follow Mercury Theater Podcast on your podcast host of choice. Feel free to send fan mail to the cast to john at mercurytheaterpodcast.com. We'd genuinely love to hear from you. If you'd like to follow our socials, we're on pretty much all of them as Mercury Theater Podcast. Oh, and a special thanks goes to our new social media assistant, Maisel Franco. Visit our website, mercurytheaterpodcast.com, which we maintain fairly religiously. Find all the links to these and more in the show notes. If you're a patron, stay tuned for outtakes and more. Our upcoming extra episode features voice talent Morgan Blackwell, which will premiere July 12th. Until then, I'm John Badger. Now what?